Well, good morning again, everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Clark, executive pastor here at Calvary Chapel Visalia and sitting here with our senior pastor, Pastor Bob Grenier. Uh, beautiful message today. What an encouragement. What an anointed, timely message today, Pastor Bob. Thank you. It was a joy. It is a joy. It really is. And did you get through all your notes? Almost. Good job. <laughs> that was a lot to cover. Almost. Yeah, yeah. praise the Lord. Uh, I was thinking about... Um, I remember as a new Christian, I heard a pastor, and I don't remember which pastor, probably a Calvary Chapel pastor at one of the conferences mm -hmm. teach that uh, his experience had been that, you know, either uh, he had just come out of a trial, um, or he was in the middle of a trial, or he was probably getting ready to head right into a, another trial, Oh, right? don't say that. I mean, right. but isn't that, that's, isn't that's that just... What, yeah, that's what we think, isn't it? We and think, oh, so, don't say that, it's but it's so the truth. true, isn't it? It's, it's so the true. truth. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And then the Lord uses those trials to strengthen us, as you sure. taught us today, yep. so then we can strengthen others and come alongside them and really enter into, uh, empathize, where you enter into their pathos or their pain yes. uh, instead of just, you know, apathetic is a pathos where you're kind of uh, not concerned with someone's pain. Mm -hmm. uh, sympathy, the sim, is like coming alongside someone in their yes. pain. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, but empathy is the deepest form of uh, relating and comforting because you are experiencing the pain with them. You enter into their suffering yes. with them. And the only yeah. way you could do that is if you have suffered mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. How well said. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, um, we're here for about 15 or 20 minutes, Pastor Bob, and then... Um, and then we're going to uh, stop the live broadcast, and then you and I will continue having a discussion mm -hmm. for another 15 or 20 minutes that right. we will put online afterwards. Right. Mm -hmm. So just a couple of, of things that I've been thinking about this week um, related to Bible prophecy. Yeah. Um, and we talked about this the other day, how everything is just being lined up right now like never before for the world to be of one mind, one government, one leader, uh, one economy, one currency, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Bible actually predicted that yes. this would be the case yes. right before Christ comes back. Isn't yes. that right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's all there in the book of Revelation. That's right. Laid out very uh, sequentially, uh, clear as a bell, actually. Yes. Yeah. And as we've talked about, uh, pestilences and uh, plagues are part of the end times, mm -hmm. signs of the times that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, I believe it's verse 7 or 8, that there would be uh, famines, earthquakes, and plagues, mm -hmm. in addition to many other things right. that would be coming like the birth pangs, labor yes. pains of a woman mm -hmm. with increasing frequency and intensity. And that's exactly what we see happening. Yes, it's, uh, it's made, I think it's made... Well, I'm certain that it's gotten the attention of every believer who may have lost sight of our hope of the second coming of Christ, and we think things are just going to go on, and this would never happen to us, we're Americans, but not so. And uh, in, not that all Americans have been brought to our knees spiritually, but in terms of our ability to handle this, we found ourselves not able to, and we're working furiously to try and accommodate the problem. Um, so it's a real, uh, I believe, uh, based on what we were just studying in the Bible, that God is testing his family. He's testing his children. We're going through a great trial, not the great tribulation, but we're all going through a great trial of our faith. What are we going to do about all this? How, you know, how are we going to act? And I'm certain you have other things you want to talk no, about. No, no, I appreciate that. And, and it's, it's very true. It's, it is a testing. And like you said earlier, <clears throat> this, is, this is kindergarten, kindergarten compared to the Great Tribulation. Yes. Uh, and we don't believe we will be here as the church. We believe we'll be raptured yes. prior to the Great Tribulation period, certainly uh, the time of God's wrath being poured out upon the world because God doesn't need to pour his wrath out upon his church uh, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, and God has not appointed us to wrath, the Bible says. So we don't, you know, Jesus suffered our wrath upon the cross sure <clears throat> because we're in him. 
the wrath has already been poured out mm -hmm. on Christ on the cross. We've accepted Christ as our Savior. So then we are not appointed to God's That's wrath. Right. That's for the Christ-rejecting world exactly. that has rejected His yes. Son and the yes. gospel message. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <clears throat> uh, well, in Revelation chapter 13, I think this, this somewhat speaks to the, the days in which we live and, uh, and, and will speak uh, more clearly uh, in the future to the tribulation period and, the, and those who are here at that time with the Antichrist. But I just want to read a few verses here out of Revelation chapter 13 where it speaks about the Antichrist and the one world government and the mark of the beast. We read in verse 3 of Revelation 13, and I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded. This is speaking of the Antichrist now. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world or the whole world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshiped the dragon. The dragon is the devil who gave authority to the beast. The beast is the Antichrist. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who was able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months uh, or three and a half years, which is halfway through the tribulation period. The tribulation period is seven years. Uh, then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and those who dwell in heaven, and it was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe and tongue and nation, and all who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world." And so, you know, this was written 2,000 years ago for a large part of church history. If you go back and read the early church fathers or a lot of the great uh, uh, theologians, they had no idea what this was talking about, did That's they? Right. No, they it, was just, it was just way beyond their comprehension to yes. think, how could the whole world yeah. do anything all at the same right. time? Yeah. Wonder after a beast, follow mm -hmm. a leader, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, worship one person, mm -hmm. uh, this, this leader, this political leader who will be empowered by, by the devil. They couldn't imagine. No. But here we are today, mm -hmm. and you see the whole world yes. is all at once being communicated to through the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, Instantly. Instantaneously, uh, through different translation services, Google Translate and so forth, mm -hmm. uh, Babel and these other translation services, you could literally, as we're sitting here talking in English, people could be hearing us in their country in Mandarin Chinese right instantaneously yeah. oh, or in Farsi in, in, in Iran mm -hmm. or any language around the world. Mm -hmm. Instantly, we're all able to see what's going on at one time and communicate and understand yes. yeah. what's going on all over the world, aren't we? Yes, as you were saying a few minutes ago, uh, we can see how what the Bible says in the book of Revelation could actually happen because we're being set up now to, we're more of a global community than ever, especially in the last 30 years or so, the, the European uh, Union, uh, when that first came about, uh, and that's morphed into other things and morphed again, but that was the beginning, kind of a new power rising, and, and now there's all of these powers. We're, we're talking to the leaders of all these nations. We're uh, helping one another, or we're fighting with one another, but there is this uh, ability to communicate globally, instantly, we call it breaking news, don't we? That's right. <laughs> it's pretty, Un unheard of in, in, yeah. in, all of, mm -hmm. in all of human history. Mm -hmm. This is un unprecedented, the things that we're living in. The whole world has never, ever been shut down all at the same Isn't time. That over something? any reason. Yeah. Even in World War II, World War I, you know, affected certain countries at certain times. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was other countries that were totally unaffected mm -hmm. uh, by what was happening in Europe mm -hmm. or the Pacific mm -hmm. Theater or what yeah. have you. But here the whole world yes. is never isolating themselves locking themselves up and they're stuck glued to their phones wondering what's going to be coming forth next about the advice from the governments mm -hmm. and the World Health Organization, the CDC, National Institute of Health, etc. What are they saying now? Yeah. What's the new numbers? The latest, yeah. The latest. 
Yeah. So it's, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 4, I, I was thinking of this earlier, and we'll come back here to Revelation 13 in a minute to look at the mark of the beast. But Daniel uh, uh, says this in, in Daniel chapter uh, 12. And again, this is, a, again, speaking about the, uh, the end times, the last days, time of Jacob's trouble and the tribulation period. He says this uh, in verse uh, the second part of verse 1 of Daniel chapter 12, he says, There shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time your people shall be delivered. This is speaking about the Jews, Israel. Uh, everyone who is found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust shall uh, awake. The dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. So the Old Testament also talks about a resurrection for the righteous and the unrighteous. Uh, and verse three, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, those who turn many to righteousness like stars forever. But you, Daniel, verse four, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. So really what God was showing Daniel and God showed Daniel a whole lot about the, the Antichrist and the uh, son of perdition, the man of sin, etc. cetera. Uh, and, uh, and he says, but Daniel, it's not for you or for your generation. He says, seal these things up until the end. And then here's a definition uh, of what it's going to be like in the end. He says, many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Mm -hmm. And again, Daniel probably had no clue what he was writing when he wrote this 550 years before Christ. Mm -hmm. But today we see uh, many running to and fro. People have never traveled, which is one of the reasons we have the flu, this coronavirus, everywhere in the world all yeah. at the same time, because there's never been the possibility of human travel on the globe in a global sense where people could travel the world mm -hmm. almost instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Certainly within 24 hours, you oh, could yes. be anywhere on the planet. You could be around the other side of the world. That is easily. correct. Mm -hmm. So this was a prophecy, wasn't yeah. it? That it, it, it? God showed it, it, Daniel. He said, you know, seal these things up, Daniel, for your generation mm -hmm. until the end. Mm -hmm. Well, then in the end, there'll be many who are going to be traveling to and fro. Mm -hmm. And this is fascinating. He says, and knowledge shall increase. Mm -hmm. Yes. With the information superhighway, yes. the World Wide Web, mm -hmm. knowledge is expanding exponentially. Yeah, you know, uh, you can ask Siri, if you're on good terms with her, <laughs> you can say, Siri, uh, how long has Amy Kellogg, a reporter for Fox News, been working in Europe? Uh, oh, here's something right here. She's been with them since 1999. In the past, you couldn't find that answer even in your encyclopedia because it's outdated already. That's right. Uh, we can ask almost anything and get the answer instantaneously, not just one answer, but perhaps thousands of websites that you could visit. It's obviously incredible. Knowledge has really increased, and of course, uh, what, they, what scientists can do medically to help transplant organs and whatnot, uh, automobiles, spaceships, missiles, uh, the International Space Station going to Mars, the moon, and whatnot. Uh, you know, it wasn't that long ago that we were in horse and buggies here in, That's right. in the United 100 States. That's right, 100 years ago, yep, a little 100 over 100 years, years ago. ago. That's right. Just isn't that something? It's, it's pretty amazing. And this is a, another specific yes. prophecy yes. about the end times, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and knowledge increases exponentially. Correct. The computers have helped to do that. And with artificial intelligence mm -hmm. coming online, the computers are beginning to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I think I heard recently that uh, knowledge used to double every 5,000 years and then every 1,000 years and then every 100 years. Uh, now, knowledge is doubling literally uh, every minute. At first, it's every, every, every 12 hours, then every hour, then every half an hour. Now, I believe it's doubling every minute is or every two right? minutes mm -hmm. exponentially yes. with the Internet and people mm -hmm. putting information online. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, again, the Bible predicted this. Now, interesting, I was thinking a minute ago, even with what we've just looked at in Luke, Jesus says concerning mankind, unbelievers, people who do not know Christ, it says men's hearts 
will fail them because of fear. Yes. Their hearts will fail, meaning their hearts will sink. They'll just, they won't know what to do. They're afraid. Um, Believers are not uh, unaware of these things. We're actually talking about them. The Bible tells us about them. But we have a joy, we have a peace, an expectation, and a mission while we're here to proclaim the gospel. Amen. Isn't that something? Well, why don't we take a break right now, Pastor Bob? Why don't you pray if you would? And then we're going to say goodbye to everybody who's watching online. And then we're going to continue to record here in the church. And we will put up our, uh, the rest of our discussion, we'll put it up online on our social media. Great. Well, thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and pray. Our Father, thank you for your word. We, We find ourselves thanking you over and over and over again for the Bible. It is your word. Thank you for the work you do in the lives of your children in these days. Lord, may we be renewed, revived, encouraged, refreshed, finding our mission, as it were, in light of this changed world. We pray for your personal direction and leading in each one of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.